Federal public health officials authorize boosters for a limited group. On this episode, find out if you qualify for additional COVID-19 protection and how and when to get it. Whether you live in or just love Johnson County, Kansas, JOCO On The Go has everything Johnson County. Here's what's happening and what's coming up in the community you call home. Thanks for joining us for JOCO On The Go. I'm your host, Teresa Freed, a Johnson County resident and employee of Johnson County Government. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently announced approval of booster doses of the Pfizer vaccine, but not everyone should be lining up just yet. For more on that, we have with us Johnson County Department of Health and Environment Deputy Director Charlie Hunt and Stacy Province Health Services Division Director with JCDHE. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. Well, first off, let's just talk a little bit about what exactly was approved. So who can get the booster at this point? Sure. Well, at this point, the recommendations are that anyone uh, age 65 years and older, uh, those in residence of long-term care or those uh, between the ages of 50 and 64, if they have underlying medical conditions that put them at risk for severe COVID-19, that's a group that is recommended they really should get the booster dose. And in addition to that, uh, people who are Uh, 18 to 49 years of age, or uh, if they have an occupation that puts them at increased risk for uh, infection or uh, complications from COVID-19, the recommendations are they really uh, could consider it uh, as well. Uh, So it's really kind of two two tiers to that, the the strongest recommendations being those 65 years of age and older, those in long-term care, and those uh, 50 to 64 if they have underlying conditions. Okay, and just to be clear, this is not the same thing as as, um, the approval of that third dose for those who are immunocompromised. So can you talk about the difference? Sure. So that group that you're talking about was a much narrower set of people with uh, severe immune compromising conditions. It's also important to note that for that group, uh, uh, the recommendations were for either the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, depending on which uh, vaccine they got for their first two doses. And the time frame was different. For them, it was 28 days after their second dose. So for the current recommendations for the booster dose, it's only for the Pfizer vaccine. The time frame is six months after their second dose, and it's for a much broader uh, range of people that are eligible now. Okay. And I don't know, Stacey, if you if you know this one, but so the, the booster shot, is that the exact same dosing amount or is, is it a different yes. amount? Yes, Teresa, it is the same dose. Um, and it's, it's going to be very similar to the first two doses in the primary series. So uh, people can expect very much what they experienced with the first two vaccines. Um, most common side effects, like with any vaccine, are really Uh, just a little bit of fatigue and some soreness at the injection site. So it's going to be very similar to what they experienced the first two times. Okay. And so that's the similarity. Now, what's different this time, we were instructing people to come back to, say, for example, our health clinic to get their their second dose of their vaccine. But now the, the vaccine is widely available. So for that booster dose, where should they go? Right. Um, Just like you said, uh, when the the vaccine was first released, uh, we were one of the first uh, clinics in the area to receive that broadly. Um, Now it is much more widely available. So you can really go anywhere to your primary care provider if they're offering that vaccine, your local pharmacy, a lot of the grocery store chains um, offer those as well. So it's really whatever is convenient to you now. Um, It's it's pretty much in, in every store in the Metro. I know I was at Walmart this weekend and I saw their sign and CVS and Hy-Vee, of course, amongst many others. So really wherever is convenient for you to get it, we recommend you do that. Uh, so another, another difference here, can you talk a little bit about, um, this vaccine, the booster dose wasn't approved for all ages. So if you have, if you got Pfizer and you're, um, if you're younger, you can't necessarily get that, right? It's not approved for all like the the 13 to, to 18 year olds or 12 to 18 year olds, right? That's correct. Um, all of the recommendations, um, as Charlie had stated, there are some people that should get that booster dose. There are some people that may be eligible for the booster dose, but all of those age groups are over age 18. Um, so just to kind of recap, um, The people that should get those booster doses are those that are 65 
or older or those residing in long-term care facilities. And those can be 18 plus if they're residing in that type of facility, they are at a higher risk. Um, it's also going to be those individuals that are 50 to 64 with underlying medical conditions. And then those that may get the vaccine are those that are 18 to 49 with underlying medical conditions or those that are 18 to 64 with certain occupational um, exposures that put them at a higher risk for, for getting COVID-19. Okay, and I know there was a lot of confusion, it seemed like, just about the process of getting the vaccines approved for, for the booster here. So uh, we, we heard from the FDA, then we heard from the CDC, and then the CDC director. So can you talk a little bit about um, what are those steps that have to happen before people can actually get the shot? Sure. I think the, probably the best way to, to look at this is that there really are kind of three major steps. The first step is that the manufacturers of the vaccine make an application to the FDA uh, to, in this case, either amend the emergency use authorization or to amend the license uh, that, they're, that their vaccine is currently approved with. Uh, the FDA then considers that. They have an advisory committee that looks at this and makes a recommendation to the FDA after reviewing everything that the manufacturers have submitted as well as additional things. They're essentially looking for two, two major things. One is, it, is it safe and is it effective? Uh, and then based on it, the FDA will then uh, make their regulatory decision to amend the emergency use authorization uh, or to uh, amend the license. At that point, it goes over to the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, which is a group that advises the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And they, they use a similar process, except they really, their job is to determine what the recommendations should be. So who should get the vaccine once it's been authorized by or approved by the FDA. And so they make their recommendations. And then the, finally, the decision is made by the, the CDC in terms of what those final recommendations are going to be. So we had a little bit of a roller coaster over the last couple of weeks uh, with diff all these different groups uh, making different decisions. But ultimately, uh, what we ended up with was uh, the final recommendations. And that's what we're now implementing uh, with the groups that we, uh, that we indicated earlier. So this is probably going to happen several times over. I would anticipate that we're going to have, you know, similar applications from Johnson and Johnson and from Moderna as well, and they will not necessarily do the exact same thing they did with Pfizer. So can you talk a little bit about um, why these approvals are coming in at different times? Sure. Well, it's important to remember though, go all the way back to you know the development of these vaccines, and you know some companies got uh, started a little sooner, and and were, they were able to just work. Uh, uh, more quickly uh, to get their vaccine developed. Uh, and then, uh, you know, all the clinical trials that had to take place. And so they were just, they were really just ahead of the others. Um, and so that, that's a big part of it is, is going back to that whole cycle with, with uh, development and the research. Uh, and then at, even with the regulatory process, uh, all those things were, were on different time uh, frames. Uh, and as we know, the, the different vaccines are also uh, authorized for different or recommended for different uh, age groups, uh, for example. For some, it's you know, um, different age groups than others. Um, and so it's very possible that for the booster doses, we might also see uh, recommendations or approvals differ by vaccine. And so we'll have to just see how this process plays out. Okay. And so I'm sure some people are wondering, I want full coverage. I don't want to have any gaps or anything like that, but maybe I got Moderna and it's not approved yet. So why is it important that you follow the exact same vaccine throughout? So if I got Pfizer, I get Pfizer again. Well, again, that, that's what the recommendations are because it's, it's the review of all the research and all the data uh, was done for the Pfizer vaccine for this, uh, the current uh, authorization and recommendation. So the other vaccine manufacturers have, are in the process of, of, of uh, looking at booster doses as well. And, uh, and we'll submit those to the FDA for uh, authorization or approval. And so once they go through that same process, we, we might very well see uh, approvals and recommendations for booster doses for those vaccines. So unfortunately, that means we just have to sit tight for a while. But I also think it's important to remember that all three vaccines are very uh, effective and very safe and uh, still offer a good uh, deal of protection against severe disease and hospitalization. 
uh, the booster dose is just boosting uh, that effectiveness just a little bit more for, for people that, uh, again, those 65 years of age and older in particular, and those with chronic underlying conditions, uh, the immunity has a tendency to wane over time, uh, but still they have a high degree of protection. And of course, we're coming up on the holiday season pretty rapidly. And so I'm sure there are people who have some concerns if they, they are not yet able to get that booster dose. Is the original first and second doses or just first dose for Johnson & Johnson, how long is that protection going to last for them? Are they going to be safe through the holidays, for example, getting getting together? Well, that's, that's a really difficult question to answer. You know, again, the, all three vaccines are very safe and very effective. Um, but as we know, the uh, particularly with the Delta variant that has been uh, circulating for the last few months or so, it's highly contagious. Um, and I think that all the, uh, the, the recommendations that we've been talking about in terms of avoiding getting large groups of people together, particularly indoors, I think that's still gonna hold, unfortunately, and, and people really need to be careful about that. Um, and they don't wanna, they don't wanna get together and, and put their, their loved ones, uh, those the older um, family members and those who might have chronic conditions. If you get a lot of people together from different households, uh, that does create a, a high risk situation. So, uh, you know, we ask people to, to really think about that and what their own uh, personal risks might be. Uh, gathering outdoors, uh, the weather is beautiful right now still, and, and you're gathering outdoors is still safer than gathering indoors. And, uh, you know, wearing masks, uh, if you are indoors, I think those are all common sense things that people could do to protect themselves and each other. And of course, we still have a very large group of people in our population who qualify for no vaccine at this point, sure. and that's younger children. So um, we are hearing some news that maybe there's going to be some movement on getting children vaccinated in that 5 to 11 age group. Can you talk about the latest on that? Well, I think that we're all anxiously waiting for, for that to happen. I, I, you know, I think it's important to note that you know, the, the, the authorization, the approval, and the recommendations are really just the first step. We have, uh, you know, we're a large county. We have a lot of children that fall into that, that five to 11 uh, years of age group, and it's going to take a while to, to get everybody vaccinated. Um, and so in the meantime, again, reiterating all those things we've talked about before in, in terms of prevention, it's going to take a little time. Okay. And of course, COVID-19, the Delta variant are not the only things that are going to be going around this time of year. We also have the flu, which is an annual visitor for, for many of our families. And so um, can we talk a little bit about, is it safe to get the, that flu shot when you get your COVID vaccine? Absolutely. So it has been uh, cleared that you can give the COVID vaccine at the same time as the flu vaccine. So there is no problem with that at all, you can uh, do that on the same visit. So definitely would recommend that. Okay, and do you know if it intensifies like the side effects or anything like that? Or do people no. feel worse? No, um, like we, we discussed with, with the booster dose, um, really those same things can occur. Just um, the fatigue sometimes after those vaccines, you might get some mild flu-like symptoms and some localized muscle pain, um, but it should not magnify it. And it has been approved to be given simultaneously. Okay. And for our listeners, where can people go to get that first dose, second dose, get a booster, all, all of those shots, including the, the flu shot right now? You can go to any community provider for that, whether that be your primary care physician, uh, specialist, um, local pharmacy or grocery store. Uh, for those vaccines. You can also come see us at the Johnson County Health Department. We do, uh, we are taking appointments currently for booster doses uh, for the Vi Pfizer vaccine, as well as first and second dose COVID vaccine appointments. If you also need your flu vaccine, uh, you can come see at us, us at our Olathe location um, and we can take care of both of those there as well booster dose and flu vaccine. Well, thank you both so much for being here today. And to get more information about the vaccines and COVID-19 in Johnson County, you can go to jocogov.org forward slash coronavirus. Thanks for listening. You just heard Joko on the go. Join us next time for more everything Johnson County. Have a topic you want to discuss? We want to hear from you. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at jocogov. For more on this podcast, visit jocogov.org forward slash podcast. Thanks for listening.